Hi everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Pradyut Wagre. Today I would like to share my views on uh, the so-called core odds classification or core ads classification. Now, why I, I have chosen this topic today is we are getting many uh, patients as well as the physicians who are getting a lot of confusion with the classification of given on the uh, on the CT scan reports. So the, sometimes the, the core ads is given as four or five and it is not tallying with the clinical history of symptoms or the other relevant blood investigations. So many physicians are in doubt what treatment to start at what stage, what complications to expect, etc. And even the anxiety level among patients are increasing on seeing these CT scan reports. So let us clarify some views about what is meant by this core ads classification. This, uh, the core ads classification is a standardized reporting system developed in Netherlands for patients with suspected COVID-19 infection. And this is developed for a place with moderate to high prevalence of this infection. It is classified, this classification divides the CT findings into six types. The core ads one is where there is no suspicion at all of COVID-19 or this is basically normal or showing certain non-infectious abnormalities. Core ads two is where there is a low suspicion of COVID-19 infection and the abnormalities seen on the CT scan are consistent with infections which are other than COVID-19. Core ads three is indeterminate where the, you are unclear or unsure whether COVID-19 is present or not. And core ads four, is one which gives a high suspicion of uh, COVID-19 with abnormalities, which give a high su suspicious diagnosis for COVID-19. Core ads five is described when you have a very high uh, chances when you have a typical COVID-19 pictures on the CT scan. And when this core ad five is associated with the positive PCR test, it is known as core ad six. So, so based on the CT findings, the level of suspicion of COVID-19 infection is graded from very low as seen in core ads one up to very high in core ads five. Okay, and the severity and the stage of the disease is determined not only with the CT findings, but there should be remarks on the associated comorbidities, if any present with the patient and also the relevant differential diagnosis. So core ads five has a very high positive predictive index and core ads one is a, almost a negative uh, thing, except in few exceptions, as I will tell you later on. It is mostly the core ads two, three, and four, which have a lot of inter-observer variation. And this has a poor negative and predictive value. It is mandatory again to interpret the CT findings in association with the history the clinical symptoms and also the duration of the symptoms because as i have told you the ct scan can be negative in the first few days of a mild infection so it is the duration of the symptoms when the scan is taken is also very important now let us see what is meant by core ads one the, as this ct has shown it's a practically a normal ct scan whenever you see a picture like this with the core ads one on the ct report COVID-19 is highly unlikely. The CT can is normal or there may be findings other than infection, such as congestive heart failure, sarcoidosis, malignancy, you know, uh, some interstitial lung disease, etc., depending on the clinical history and the physical signs. But an exception, as I told you again earlier, has to be made, and this is the pitfall. This exception has to be made for the first few days of a mild infection with COVID-19 when the CT scan can be normal. The CT image, this uh, CT image, what you see here on your screens, is that of a patient with complaints of five days duration. So in spite of the five days duration, there are no abnormalities seen on the CT scan and the PCR was negative. So this is not any COVID-19 infection. Coming to CORADS 2, which is again a suggestive of a non-COVID-19 infection. So here, the level of suspicion of COVID-19 infection is low. The findings on the CT scan 
can be consistent with other infections, like they can show typical bronchiolitis with tree in bud appearance or with thickening of the bronchial walls. And there are no typical signs of COVID-19 seen on the CT. As you can see the CT here, this shows minimal amount of bronchiectasis and some amount of bronchial wall thickening with tree in bud appearance. There are no ground glass opacities seen. These images are again that of CORADS2. The, these images show there is a bronchial wall thickening with tree in bud appearance, as you can see with the yellow arrow and associated consolidation. There are still no ground loss opacity. So this is again negative for COVID-19. This is also a case of poor ads too. This is a case of a 40 year old woman who presented to us with fever and coughing. And the CT scan shows a huge low bar consolidation with a tree in bud appearance, which is again consistent with a bacterial infection or a bacterial pneumonia. That is, though this is, this is again CORAT2, but it shows a typical bacterial infection and COVID-19 is unlikely here. Then we come to CORAT3, which is the stage where you are unsure or you are, the scan is indeterminate whether it's COVID-19 or not. Here the CT abnormalities indicate that there is infection occurring but it does not tell us surely whether it is COVID-19 or other viral infections or uh, other conditions causing widespread bronchopneumonia, like other viral infections like influenza pneumonia, or it can be a septic emboli with ground glass opacity. So these are the gray areas. We present the CTs of four cases here. These uh, CTs were taken on first day of the complaints. So if you see, the all four CTs are done on the first day of the complaints by the patient. The first CT showed unifocal ground glass opacities, and all the even the second one shows unifo, unifocal GGO, that is ground glass opacities. Third, again, where the yellow arrow is pointing, it shows a unifocal ground glass opacities, and here also. On the fourth, we see the unifocal ground glass opacities. So these are the unifocal ground glass opacities the, in, in the scan done on the first day of complaints, and the PCR was negative. Whereas these scans are done on the day five of the complaints, on the day seven of the complaints, and this shows a multifocal consolidation with surrounding areas of ground glass opacities. Again, the PCR was negative. This is usually confused with COVID-19, but the PCR again is giving us a correlation that it is negative. Then, sorry, you go to the sixth case. Again, this is a case of a recent influenza pneumonia. Patient had severe coughing, and when the CT scan was done, it shows bilateral central amount of con bilateral central consolidations with diffuse ground loss opacities, as you are seeing here, diffuse GGOs. COVID test, again, PCR was negative, but the, again, the biofire panel showed that the influenza A was positive. So as I was telling you, in CORAX3, other infectious diseases which can cause bilateral bronchopneumonia, as in this case, influenza pneumonia, uh, can present and be confused with COVID-19 in the present pandemic. So, okay, that's where the, the entire treatment will change. Then we go on to the CORAX4, which has a high suspicion for COVID-19. Now, mostly the findings seen on the CT with the CORADS4 grading are suspicious, but they are not extremely typical of a COVID-19. So they can present with the unilateral ground glass opacities or with multifocal consolidations without any other typical finding of COVID-19. So the findings suspicious of COVID-19 and underlying pulmonary disease has to be again correlated with the history and the symptoms and the duration of the symptoms. If you see here in the case one, this scan was done with a history of seven days of complaints. That is on the seventh day, the scan was done. This showed a unilateral ground glass opacity in the left upper lobe here, and this was PCR positive. So this is a confirmed case of COVID-19 pneumonia. Case two, 
This shows bilateral diffuse ground glass opacities with underlying emphysema and PCR was again positive. So the duration of the symptoms when the scan is done is very, very important in history. Then we come to CORATS-5, which is a very highly suspicious of COVID-19. This is the first case which shows multifocal ground glass opacities and consolidation. This number two scan was done on the 10th day of the complaints. And if you see here, it shows bilateral multifocal ground glass opacities. One important thing is it shows a vascular thickening, which, as you can see in the circle here. Vascular thickening, the presence of vascular thickening in association with ground glass opacities is very, very classical of COVID-19 infection. This has also associated subpleural bands as seen by the yellow arrow here. And so this has diffuse patchy ground glass opacities, vascular thickening, and subpleural bands, all these combined together and with their positive PCR give you a confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19. As the disease progresses, the 11th day, this CT scan that was done, which showed extensive bilateral typical subpleural ground glass opacities and consolidation with predominant basal prevalence. There is also, as you can see, very classically seen vascular thickening. And this patient also had PCR positive. So if you have a pictures like this of bilateral basal subpleural ground glass opacities with vascular thickening, with the relevant history, and it is most likely going to be almost certain going to be COVID-19, which can be confirmed with a positive PCR test. This is a fourth case of uh, CORADS-5, which showed multiple areas of extensive ground loss uh, opacities and consolidation. That is, there is a conglomeration of the sh shadows with extensive consolidation here, as you can see in this CT. The case five again shows extensive multiple areas of ground glass opacities and extensive consolidation, again confirming the diagnosis of COVID-19. Coming to CORAT-6, which shows a typical classical CORAT-5 plus the presence of a normal of a positive PCR for COVID-19. So this CT shows bilateral extensive ground glass opacities, as you can see here with a positive PCR. Of note is another important sign you can see in extensive uh, COVID-19 is the presence of a halo sign as seen by this arrow. This is very, very important sign of an extensive COVID infection. So then we have seen what are the five or six stages of the CORATS classification. Coming to the COVID-19, again, the CT scans here can present with certain typical findings what we have discussed but we must also be aware of certain atypical findings or very, very atypical findings, which makes all the more important to take all the parameters like clinical findings, history, blood investigations, PCR, and the CT scan to make a final diagnosis. The typical findings that we have discussed are multi, multifocal ground glass opacities, which are peripheral and basally distributed. They can have an unsharp demarcation, Presence of vascular thickening is very important. They may present as crazy paving appearance, or they can present with the ground glass with consolidations, as we have seen in few of the CT scans here. The presence of reversed halo sign is a sign of an extensive COVID-19 infection. Certain other signs, like a spider web sign, has also been described. There are certain atypical findings which are also present in COVID-19 patients, but the chances are unlikely. So here you have to correlate more with other investigations as well. They can present with central or peribronchovascular uh, shadows, ground glass opacities, which can be more apically distributed. The typical ones are bilateral, basally distributed, but in atypically, sometimes you can have more apical distribution of the ground glass opacities. And it is very important that few patients can present with lymphadenopathy. In our country, the lymphadenopathy can be confused with that of tuberculosis. So the, you, you, we, we must keep our uh, you know, mind open always that lymphadenopathy in this pandemic can be seen in COVID-19 and you must investigate in that direction. The very atypical presentations are some very rarely, they can present with gravitation, calcification, bronchiolitis or a train bud appearance, nodular pattern, 
or a mass-like opacity mimicking a bronchogenic carcinoma or a pleural thickening. But these are very, very atypical presentations. So then how should a CT report be generated? The CT report should give a complete of all these points. There should be the mentioning of the duration of the complaints when the scan is done. So this CT scan is done on day five or day seven of the symptoms. That is very, very important to mention in the report. CT findings should clearly mention whether there is a ground loss opacity, whether there is associated consolidation, the distribution of the radiological uh, pattern seen, is there a presence of crazy paving, is there a presence or absence of reversed halo sign or spider web sign, presence of vascular thickening or not, because these indicate certain confirming signs of the COVID-19, presence or absence of pleural fluid and enlarged lymph nodes, etc. Once these findings are mentioned, along with the duration of symptoms and the comorbidities, then you can determine the level of suspicion of COVID-19 and then give your core ads grading. The CT severity score is again, in addition, is calculated by, in addition to the core ads grading, you have to you know, associate with the presence of comorbidities. When you combine these two, you come to the final conclusion of the severity of the CORADS and the COVID-19 infection. So the, again, I want to stress the duration of the complaints is very, very important when a CT scan is reported because it determines the expected stage of the disease. And this COVID-19 uh, findings which are seen on the CT, they should, it can be seen in many other conditions. So we must always mention the differential diagnosis which are likely possible in these cases you know, which can these findings can overlap with the as we have seen h1n1 influenza other viral pneumonias like adenovirus uh, you know cmv organizing pneumonia or acute interstitial pneumonia so friends i uh, thank you so much for listening to me i wanted to clarify certain doubts about corads so don't go by the only corads finding please correlate with your history symptoms, clinical findings, other relevant blood investigations, which we will be talking in a subsequent uh, presentation and tally these findings with your core ads and then come to a final diagnosis. Thank you so much.